What's poppin'? It's your man Qualified and Joey Squared Up. You know what's going on. It's Shop Talk. We in the building, y'all. Yeah. Um. Right now I'm coming to y'all. Pause. Starting off. Shop Talk with a heavy heart. Uh, this is <laughs> right after the uh, Rockets R. being uh, defeated and ousted out of the playoffs when it was perfectly set up for this to be uh, the time that we. Uh, go ahead and advance to the NBA championship. Uh, Kevin Durant out. Yep. Like, what the fuck? But you know, here we are. All the chips was there for you too. <laughs> but ah, uh, it wasn't meant to be. I yeah. Guess. But they said four out of the last five years, this has happened to y'all. Yeah. At the hands of the Warriors. Yeah, nigga. Like I'm. How does that make you feel? I fucking hate these niggas, bro. I'm tired of these niggas. Like, like it gotta be. Bro, I don't. I blue was my favorite color. And now I'm looking into trying to switch like, to something else. If you think about it, tired of yellow. I feel sorry for you because you got four out of the last five years. Your basketball team loses to fucking uh, Golden State. And then during the big heyday with the Chargers, your arch nemesis was the fucking Patriots. Eh. Y'all couldn't get past them. Eh. That is trash. Eh. Yeah. Pick, like, better, pick better teams, bro. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, man, dog. Yo. All right, so what are we talking about? Okay. So um, what we're actually supposed to be talking about today uh, Two different topics. Uh, the first one I wanted to uh, get into is uh, a more, I guess, a more broad topic. It's uh, influential beefs in uh, hip hop. Yeah. Uh, so, just kind of kicking that off. I guess I have to go with uh, probably the first. Battle man, uh, the what? Cool mo busy beat. Uh, so yeah, you know I mean, like, cause busy B had the the old the old guard style, and Cool Mo was like, now nah, we about to start, you know, flipping it into more what hip hop is progressed into today, as far as like memorable content. Bro, there's so many. Like, you had um, I'll just go and try. Cause that shit was crazy and Snoop got involved in that shit and That was just crazy to hear Snoop Going at Easy on, yeah. on the record You know what I mean but I think The one that I actually like Paid attention to Like Full on Was In high school And I would say Ja Rule 50 Cent Okay. And the only reason why I would, I mean, I paid attention a lot to Jay Z and Nas. Yeah. But Jay Z and Nas was great lyrically. Yeah. Like it was, it was amazing. But for me, the thing that still, the thing that captivated me was the way fucking Fifty was towards Ja. Until this day, he is still like yes. that. And I'm like, bro, this was like over Shout fifteen. Out to 50. 50, yeah. Like 15, 20 years ago, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you still carrying that same energy. Man. It's it's funny as shit, and it's <laughs> I think it's I think it's dope. Yeah, no. Nah, but people getting beat up in that beef too. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. People got stabbed and shit. Yeah. Everything. So, man, that's that's well another one that ended up, or I guess could have ended up serious, as uh, Styles P was saying was um, Beanie Siegel and Jada. Yeah. And that was a, a beef that was like kind of brewing over some time or over a short period of time. But it was kind of like, fuck, like you got, you know, state property and then you got um, the locks. Yeah. And it's like <coughs> two of the doper dudes from either of the crews yeah. like going at it. And it was just like, it was crazy. I remember I remember that time in high school and I was just like, bro, I didn't know who to sign with. You know what I mean? Because uh, BB Sequel came out and I, I forgot what uh, what record it was, but when Jada Kiss came with the fucking uh, the Kiss of Death shit, 
and then he did another one I think called like Fuck Beanie or some shit yeah, yeah. like really direct there's no subliminal like oh this is <laughs> it's like yeah that's for me this is what's happening right now yeah yeah but like bro all of those it's, it's hard to pick one but I'd say if I were to pick an absolute favorite beef pause wow it would be uh <laughs> the Ja Rule 50 yeah Ja Rule 50 was dope yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess during also during like high school, uh, was at the the Ludacris and uh, T.I. Yeah. Yeah. he got on when he got on the Stomp remix, I was like, oh, wow. when, bro, when he came through it, T.I.P. on my dear. Uh, <laughs> And I like, and I was like, you know, I was a TI fan. I was like, oh man. But yeah, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like everybody was, yeah, was with that shit. Um, I guess there was, uh, well, going back uh, to the to the eighties. Another like, I guess, influential beef as far as like hip hop history. Uh, those was like uh, KRS One and MC Shan, mm -hmm. uh, and then we got the this, the bridges over the, the bridges over, you know, like so we got like classic joints out of that. Um, so, and then going back to like Jay Z and Nas, like going back into that, like it was since it was uh, so good lyrically, like it's you know Ether. You get uh, the takeover, like, you know what I mean? So, like, you know, it's actual, just like, classic joints that, like, we're still talking about now yeah. that came out of that. Now they cool. Like, they was yeah. rocking together at uh, Webster, Webster Hall. But, like, you know, from that beef produced classics that, like, that motherfuckers can still rock with now. And that's, yeah. And I know Stood might not want to hear this one, but I think. The whole Eminem and Benzino shit. Oh, you remember that? Yo, hey, okay. Because Benzino jumped right out the fucking window and mentioned his daughter. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think at that point, like, it wasn't even so much fucking uh, Eminem going at Benzino. I think his, his main issue was with the fucking Source magazine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, Benzino was like the head of Source or some shit like that. So pretty much it was going at him with no way. Yeah, so he felt some type of way. He did that shit. Nah, bro. If that's when M was at his fucking peak. Yeah. If you gonna say something about that man's daughter at that time, bro, he just unleashed on everybody. And like after that, pretty much everybody got it. And so that was that was pretty crazy, but I mean it's two thousand and every plantation got a bunch of house. Yeah. <laughs> Not now. Yeah. That uh, doesn't get mentioned from my high school days. Uh when I with T I and Lil Flip. Mm. Had they beef uh, over the being the king of the south? Uh, well, yeah, I pulled up too. Yeah. I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to go with another one too. I mean, because I didn't pay much attention to that particular T.I. beef. Yeah, the one I did pay attention to is and rest in peace, Shawty Love. T.I. and Shawty Love and bro, I actually was riding with Shawty Love on that shit because. That man was the truth, man. Yeah. And I fucked with him so hard. Pause. But <laughs> his yeah. shit was, was dope as fuck. though. I was I was a big fan. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Hey, that was my joy too, boy. Now bringing it back, uh, I guess, to the islands back home. Mm. Uh, talking a little bit about the progression of styles in hip hop out here in the scene. Yeah. yeah. Um I'll let you <laughs> start um, who was active first. Who was active first? You were active. Oh yeah first, yeah, yeah. Facts I guess. <laughs> um what do I think about the style progression? Yeah. The style progression is is cool. I mean it's to be expected. You know yeah. I mean? But the way it should sound in like in two thousand nineteen it's, I mean, you got artists that are out here that's been rapping like from the same era that I'm from, you're from, 
you know yeah. what I mean? And some of them are changing their sound to sound more modern, some of them are staying dated. Yeah. So it's totally up to whatever fucking artist wants to do. But I think the progression, like the, the kids that are out now, well, I, not even kids, like the fucking, the dudes that are out now, yeah. like they're, they're doing dope shit. No, but thanks. the thing that I have a problem with is that a lot of the times, like it ends up sounding a little, you know, the same. Mm. And that's where I have a hard time differentiating like who the fuck is who at okay. times. But there's people that have very distinct um, styles. 4K, I know he's like developing his own, or he has developed his own sound. Yeah. And you could pick him out of the crowd. Other ones you could pick out of the crowd, you know, the people we all know. Um, Connor. Yeah. Corn. And I think the one that I would like to see more of would be uh, Lazy. Okay, yeah. Because... I think stylistically, like I started like listening or tuning in a little bit more yeah, yeah. to some of his shit, and I was just like, all right, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, right, I, I I see what he's what he's doing, yeah. and like we had that old that old not old but that other video yeah, where yeah. I said I wasn't really paying attention to his shit. Yeah, I started paying a little more attention to it. You know what I mean? And it's it's dope, yeah. but. I think I'd like to hear a lot. I'd be known. <laughs> I'd like to hear a lot more from that dude, man. But, yeah. but stylistically, I think we're way better. Well, not weird, but this time that we're in, I believe it's it's way better. And a lot of old like hip hop heads would probably say like, "Oh no, you know our our fucking era was the best," or yeah. shit like that. I don't think so, man. I really don't. <laughs> like maybe lyrically, yeah, but. Yeah. You know, lyrics ain't popping right now. Okay. I mean, they are, but it's not like how it was back then. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, I definitely feel like right now is probably the most like talented crop. Oh yeah. Of for sure. People who are out and like you know what I mean? Like everybody is is pretty well polished. Yeah. Right. The who's who's performing is like everybody is. Everybody, the thing is too, like everybody knows what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I can't, hate to keep bringing them up, but like 4K, Connor and them, just because I have like my personal experiences with them. Yeah. They know what the fuck they're doing in the studio. You know what I mean? Yeah. They know how to mix their shit. They know how to fuck with different levels of, of whatever the fuck in whatever program they're recording. With. Right. You know what I mean? Back in our day, I was just, you know what I mean, like me, Kaipo Kapua, Jay Wiz, we were just in a studio fucking hit and record and that's it. And we were just like cleaning shit up like in between <laughs> the fucking vocals. But that's it, we didn't know shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, yeah. nowadays, like sonically, pff, bro, way better. So I think sonically and stylistically way, way better than where we came from, at least. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I guess my, like, just thinking of, like, as far as the progression of styles, I remember when I got into the scene, like, everything was, like, real, like, golden era. Yeah. Uh, like, throwback. Uh, it was like, really backpackers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, just, like, we was just, like, mad underground. Um, yeah. You had to be like rapping, rapping out here. <laughs> yeah. But like it was cool. Like, cause I mean, like, pers at that time, like, that's what I was like heavy listening to anyway. Yeah. But like, you know, uh, I, to, to see it progress from that and then I, when like us with Ill Hill, we got in there and uh, we were like some of the, we at at that time they all called us they called us all the high school kids when the only one who was in high school was uh my man uh Christian, young Roxa. Uh, -huh. uh so uh, but like after us I um we uh, met the broke mokes at one of us at one of the shows. Um and then 
after that, they started getting on shows. Cream was getting on shows. And so, like, a- after us, like, all the other younger cats started, like, popping in. And then all of a sudden, it was, like, a whole new wave coming into the scene. And then with that happening, uh, the sound started to change. Like, we had, like, still kind of, like, uh, our vibe, like, we still did some boom, a whole lot of boom bap shit, so yeah. like the older heads still fucked with us, but we would also like dabble in like newer sounds. So and we had a younger following anyway because that was the homies, yeah. and then all the other cats started coming in and just doing a whole bunch of other stuff, and then like it was, it was just a new sound. And I remember older cats, like you know. They would be like, "Well, you guys are cool. But what do you think about those?" I'd be like, "Yo, they're, they're cool. Like, <laughs> what you mean? Yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean?" So, um, but now from from that time to seeing us get older and uh, the like coins and and Connor and all of them come up to where they are, and now like some of them, fam, what? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just like... You don't, you don't realize that shit. Yeah. Right? But, like, I guess seeing, like, the progression from then to now and seeing, like, how talented, like, everybody is now, like... Yeah. When we were coming up, it was like we was out here rocking shows but still learning what the fuck was going on. Like, yeah. these cats are coming out here, like, already prepared. And that's dope to see, like, y'all taking yeah. it serious. And, you know what I mean? And honestly, like, bro, like... If I could pick an era to, like, be at that age, like, 17 to 25 or whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? If I could pick an era to be that age, it would be this one. Because, that. like, bro, think about it. Like, when we were in the fucking studios back then, most of the times it was, like, we were in established, like, actual fucking studios that were ran by like some old ass engineer that was used to fucking engineering people playing like ukuleles and shit you know what i'm saying or like some some actual like rock type shit you know what i mean or or hawaiian music or whatever it may have been but it definitely wasn't fucking rap you know what i'm saying thanks like for a good amount of my first mixtape i was recording at uh go aloha studios and those are the dudes that signed um Kaipo Kapoor. Mm. They signed uh the OP Pickers, Rebel Soldiers and all that shit. So yeah. that was their lane. And actually like Imua Garza like helped mix and master my shit. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? And it was like one of the first like rap projects that he like really fucking <laughs> laid hands on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was just kinda like it had a good quality, but a lot of the shit where I wanted to take it, it wasn't done. You know what I'm saying? So, like, the kids nowadays, like, they could do this shit at home and spend however fucking whatever amount of time they want on it. Yep. And they could tweak these little things and, and really get it and master it to the point where it is, like, their fucking vision is, like, coming to life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's dope as fuck. Okay. But, and I'm just like, God damn. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I wish my name was Ocean Evil. <laughs> Or something. <laughs> you no, know nah, like for real though. Like, if I had to pick an area, I'd, I'd definitely pick this one. Uh-huh. I trade mine right the fuck in. Yo, nah, facts. This would this would definitely be the time. I, yeah. Man. Especially with fucking Instagram, SoundCloud. All Bro, that shit. I'll be yeah. wilding. <sighs> in a good way. This is a this is a good time. Yeah. yeah.